do you do? I drive. The roar of the engine, the squeal of the tire, the thrill of the chase. Not much can compare to an expertly crafted car chase, whether it's among the peaks and valleys of the streets of San Francisco, through the bowels of New York City, or the barren wasteland of the Fury Road. Nothing grips you quite like cars tearing across the pavement with one goal in mind, the chase. For the Cinematropolis, I'm Zachary Burns, and if you haven't guessed it by now, this installment is all about the car chase. So buckle up. Oh, oh, oh my goodness, I am so sorry. Because it's time for the character-driven car chase. Films are made up of a sequence of shots that add up to tell a cohesive story, and the way those shots are composed and the way they are edited together can vary wildly from film to film, each shot carefully chosen to enhance a scene, convey a mood, or reveal information about the story or the characters. And all this holds true for the car chase. How a car chase is shot and cut together can make it a non-stop thrill ride, comedic farce, or a scene so fraught with tension you could cut it with a dull and rusty machete. And in rare cases, it can even be all three at once, like this excellent scene in 1974's Freebie and the Bean, directed by Richard Rush. Dirty best, while we get them lighted. Dirty best! Let's go get a cup of coffee. Dirty best! Dirty best! Dirty best. Dirty best. But let me bring your attention to a very specific type of car chase, one that isn't often used and even rarely is talked about, something I've dubbed the singular perspective car chase. This is when a car chase within a film is shot primarily, if not entirely, from the perspective of either the pursuer or the pursued, if ever even cutting away to a shot outside of our character's vehicle. This may sound reasonable enough, but consider how most car chases are filmed, a cocktail of wide shots, close-ups, and inserts to portray the entirety of the action, capturing each swerve and squeal of the tires, often from multiple angles as we see here from Paul Greengrass's latest foray into the Bourne series, Jason Bourne, from 2016. Though perhaps a little blandly titled, this car chase is no less thrilling and effective in its execution. However, this is precisely the kind of car chase we expect to see in a film, one that focuses on the thrill, the excitement, and the impressive driving. A perfect example of a car chase with a singular perspective can be found in J.C. Shandor's film from 2014, A Most Violent Year. As you can see, the camera never leaves Oscar Isaac's vehicle, and hardly ever looks away from Isaac himself, only cutting away to show us what he sees, to show us what he's focused on, the oil truck he's pursuing. When he loses sight of the truck, so do we. We find it again the exact same moment he does. It's as if we're sitting in the car next to him. Another example of this style of car chase comes from the Coen brothers' darkly comedic but often tragic Fargo from 1996. Again, the camera sticks with our character. In this instance, Peter Stormare's pancake-obsessed Gare as he chases down a car in the black of night. Notice how few shots make up this scene, and how long we hold on each shot before we cut to the next. All of this helps to build a different kind of car chase, a quieter car chase. One more example I want to bring up is the opening getaway scene from Nicholas Winding Refn's Drive from 2011. Gordon pulls up from behind the arc, can't get it to go. 
Celtics get it back. This scene differs slightly from our previous examples because in this instance our character is the pursued rather than the pursuer. But the manner in which the scene is shot is the same. Ten seconds on the clock. Sticking closely to Ryan Gosling's side as he evades the police with a select number of shots. <laughs> While all three of these films are wildly different from each other, they are also focused in the same way. As their plots intricately twist along, these films are more interested in the characters that inhabit them, and their respective car chases reflect that. By choosing the singular perspective, the filmmakers emphasize their characters over the car chase itself. Rather than a thrilling spectacle, the audience is served a dish of quiet tension. We feel what each of these characters feel as they feel it, Determined yet anxious in the case of Oscar Isaac, complete focus with a little confusion at the end for Peter Stormare, and calm collected tension with Ryan Gosling. The singular perspective car chase creates a more intimate experience for the audience and the characters because they're experiencing the same things at the same time from the same perspective. It's not a technique that's appropriate for every film with a car chase. As an obvious example, the iconic chase in William Friedkin's The French Connection from 1971 would not be improved upon by utilizing the singular perspective. But to be fair, nothing can improve it, because this car chase is a work of art. Car chases, like films, come in all shapes and sizes, some big, some small, some bombastic, and others understated. But like everything else in filmmaking, they are a tool to help tell a story. And no two stories are exactly alike, so neither should our car chases. For a deeper dive into the singular perspective car chase, I recommend one of Steven Spielberg's first films, 1971's Duel about a man being terrorized by an unseen truck driver. It's 90 minutes of Dennis Weaver having a very bad day on a lonely Californian highway, and a thrilling exercise in singular perspective storytelling writ large. My name is Zachary Burns, the writer and video editor for this essay. This video was produced by our editor Caleb Masters and the Cinematropolis, your source for thoughtful conversations about classic and independent film. Continue the conversation on our website, thecinematropolis.com. For more thoughts and conversations about film, consider checking out our other recent video essays, and be sure to subscribe so you never miss the latest from The Cinematropolis. And if you're feeling friendly, you can connect with us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.